Welcome, guys. How you doing? <clears throat> now, the lighting is a little weird. It makes me look like I'm ghastly white because I'm connected to the modem right over here. And I have my computer charger right next to me by the TV set. So I've been using the modem as opposed to the wireless to get better connection. Hopefully, the connection will be much more better in Jesus' name. I pray it's a perfect connection in Jesus' name. Now, several times this week, my internet went down completely. <clears throat> the modem just shut down and then restarted. So that's beyond my control. If it does do that, I'll try to come back on. But I got contacted by Jihad Yusuf again, and he wanted to dialogue again. So he's waiting, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to call him. But again, guys, do pray. Ask the Holy Spirit not only to take over the session, but to take over not just our ministries, but our entire lives, that our lives belong entirely to the Holy Spirit, that I'm completely <clears throat> filled with the Spirit, and I'm completely sold out to the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit fully possesses me and every one of us. And I'm not a young man anymore. As I'm getting older, <clears throat> my voice is not as strong as it used to be when I was in my 20s. Ask the Holy Spirit to reinvigorate me, rejuvenate me, replenish me, revive me, refresh me for the glory of Jesus Christ, to fill my throat with perfect health and life from his presence, my lungs and my chest, my heart and ar arteries <clears throat> with perfect health and life from his glorious, beautiful, holy presence, to strengthen my voice, to be bold, passionate, and to be pleasing to your ears for the glory of Jesus Christ. I ask the Holy Spirit to save me from error, from stammering, from confusion, from misinterpretation, to recall the scriptures perfectly, to interpret them perfectly, and to recall even the Islamic sources perfectly, and interpret them correctly for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask the Holy Spirit to make us more like the Lord Jesus, that the Lord Jesus will increase in us and we will decrease to love Jesus Christ more perfectly, to live for him more faithfully, <clears throat> to proclaim him, proclaim him more boldly, and not only live for him, but even die for him if necessary, that the Lord Jesus will wash us in his blood, wash our loved ones, my daughters, in his blood, cleanse us and shield us by the power of the blood of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask that the Holy Spirit will help me to be a blessing to my neighbors, not a nuisance, and to convict Jihad Yusuf, because at the end of the day, we want this man to fall in love with Jesus Christ and be saved. So pray for him, pray for us to... Be Jesus, bold when we need to be, loving, compassionate when we need to be. In all things, magnify the Lord Jesus, not just preach his word, but live his word. Holy Spirit, take over this session. Take over our lives. Take over <clears throat> my voice and my throat and give me the health I need to glorify Jesus and bless your servants and convict the Muslims and convict Jihad. Bring him to the feet of Jesus. And pray. I pray, Holy Spirit, you bless the internet connection. Stay strong and rebuke Satan. Keep him at bay. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that I won't be a distraction to my neighbors. And please save me from stammering and error and confusion and stuttering. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So invite more folks, guys, and let's ready rock and roll. I know in Europe, people should be waking up now. So let's begin. I'm going to call him. <clears throat> He's the one who contacted me. And by the way, just for the record, the only reason why I'm engaging him is because he doesn't blaspheme the Lord Jesus. He doesn't <clears throat> assault the Bible. He doesn't bully Christians and slander them. So as long as he's respectful and can engage respectfully, I'll engage him as long as the Holy Spirit wants me to, to do so. Because in engaging him, you'll learn. But more importantly, we want to see him saved. So pray for him. We want to see him saved and fall in love with Jesus Christ. Amen, Gray. <clears throat> May the Holy Spirit clear my throat and invigorate it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Yahweh, Father, Son, Spirit. Right? So let's pray for him and pray for the session. Let's see how it's going to go. I don't know. He's the one who reached out to me. So I'm not the one looking for them. So I don't want people to think, look, you're going for. No, I'm not. He reached out to me. All right. All right, let's just see. All right. Let me call this young man. All Muslims could be like him. But engage passionately, but respectfully, we have great discussions. But sadly, not all Muslims are like him.
What's up? Assalamu alaikum. Hey. <laughs> I like you, man. What's going on? I'm doing fine. Good, good. good. You reached out to me. You said you want to talk about Tawheed and Trinity again? Yeah, last time we didn't really get a chance. We kind okay. of uh, went into a bunch of different uh, discussions. Okay. And and uh, it was kind of all over the place, but you know, I wanted to you know get some things out there. Sure. But this time, I want to try to keep it more focused. Okay, we'll just stick on Tawheed and Trinity. That's it. So don't bring up any other issues, right? No, that's correct. I okay. heard you. Uh, well, I wanted to start by saying I heard you say on one of your videos that uh, Jesus allowed the Jews to insult him, right? Yeah, and yeah. he said, but don't insult the Holy Spirit. Oh, well, that was today. You were listening God. earlier today, yeah. But he, then because that's God. No, no, that's not what I said. No, no, no. So you, you're mishearing me, Jihad, right? Uh, but, 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 but that's what I, that's what I heard. And, and, no. and just allow me to finish, please. And so you said, because that's God or that's the Spirit of God. So what I heard from that is that you're saying that Jesus is making a distinction between himself and God. And that's no, what I heard. That's what you misheard. And this was in today's session. So this is the problem. This is what I warned Christians. But I expect you to mishear me because you're not trained in Christianity. But this is what I warned <clears throat> Christians about. No, I didn't say that Jesus isn't God or that the Holy Spirit is God. And therefore, you can insult Jesus because Jesus isn't God. Go back and rewatch it. Because what I said was that Jesus is standing before Jews appearing as a man. So if a man comes to you and says he is God, it's to be expected if you're a Muslim or a Jew and a Christian that when a man says that, you're going to think he's crazy and blaspheming, right? Yes. Okay, so Jesus is a man, flesh and blood Jew. So there's no denying he's a man. And in fact, this is why we're having a debate because your debate with me is he's a man, no one denies, but he's not God. So Jesus what? saying, because, because of the what? fact that you are scandalized that a man claims to be God, meaning me, I expect that you would react violently and insult me. This is why I'm patient to forgive you until I give you clear, irrefutable proof that I am more than a man, God in the flesh. But what's your excuse in blaspheming the Holy Spirit when you're seeing the miracles I'm doing by the Holy Spirit, like cast out demons, destroying Satan's kingdom, and you still insult the Holy Spirit. What excuse do you have for that? Okay, that, that, that's not what I heard, but anyways. Go back and re-listen. That's exactly what I said, but go ahead, Jihad. What's your next point? What I'm saying to you is, don't you make a distinction between God and Jesus? I don't know. Because it depends he, what you mean by God. What do you mean by God? If you mean God the Father... Yes, Jesus is not God the Father, but because he's the son of the Father, he has the same nature of his Father. Uh, just to give you an example what I mean. So how is that one? That's what I don't understand. How is that one? Because, I don't have a problem with anybody okay, well, following Jesus. Nobody loves Jesus as much as the Christians, uh, as, you know, like Muslims do. Well, okay, and we, you don't love my we Jesus. believe what he taught as far as being good to your neighbor and, and giving charity and helping the poor and stuff like this. But yeah. what you have to understand is we're not willing to deitize him. Well, number one, you don't love my Jesus. You love Isa ibn Maryam that you think is the real Jesus. Isa ibn Maryam, yes. Yeah. But that's not the Jesus we believe in because Isa ibn Maryam is another Jesus. But let's keep it one at a time because you brought several issues. When you say, how do you understand? I don't understand how God is one. Now, you just committed shirk. I hope you know that. No, I said I don't understand how you guys say that. Yeah, God you just is committed lost. shirk. You know, don't you play games. Don't, no, Sam, you did commit shirk. You Sam, I, we were having a good cut. Now you're playing around. There you go. Yes, you uh, did. Because let me explain to you if you're patient. Does not the Quran say in 42 verse 11, 42 verse 11, and Surah, Surah Al-Fas 112 verse 4, 112 verse 4, and 42 verse 11. There's nothing comparable to Allah. Allah is unlike anything in creation. You agree with that? Yeah, Allah is, is uh, laysa kamitli. So nothing like him, right? Allah is nothing like Okay, him. but notice what you just said. You're assuming that God, if he's one, the only way he can be one, if he's one, only one person. 
But that's only true of creation. Yes, you are one person, one man. You can't be two persons if you're one man, right? You cannot be two persons if you're one man, right? You, creature, right? So you're trying to say that if God is God, he can do anything. Right? You believe that too. God is above his creation, and he's unlike creation. So if God says, this is how I am one, and this is how I am many, then who are you to tell God what kind of oneness, <clears throat> what kind of unity must he exist as in order for you to accept it? That doesn't work. But where does he say that? that all three are one mm -hmm. where do you where does it say in, in the new testament that all three are one i don't think it's explicitly mentioned i think that's you don't need the, to have you don't need to have one verse where it says all three are one in that exact fashion uh -huh. well uh -huh, uh -huh. hold on you sure you want to go there you're setting yourself up because if i give you john 10 30 do you believe when jesus says, i and the father are one is that good enough for you at least to prove that jesus is one with the father and therefore one god with the father well, I don't believe it's true. Okay, so then why are you asking me to show you something in the Bible? So you just asked me to show you something in the Bible. I do. You don't believe. So how okay, am I going to so, answer your so, question? Yeah, I was asking you if that's the case. Obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's corrupted. But well, see, now you're changing the topic because, no, your prophet said it's not corrupted. Can you stay on the topic? Because now you're telling me to go off topic. So you're changing the topic. Stay on topic. Go. Okay, so you're asking me where in the Bible does it say these three are one. It doesn't have to say it in the exact way. Just like if I ask you, where do you find in the Quran Allah saying he's a singular person, only one person? You can't show me that because he doesn't say he's one person, right? He just says wahid, ahad. But what does wahid and ahad mean? So my point is, just like you look at the entire Quran and study the Quran in its entire context to learn about your God, we look at the Bible in its entirety and we see all that the Bible says about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and about God. And that's how we derive theology. But can I show you where Jesus says, I and the Father one in the context where clearly he's saying, I'm not the Father, but with the Father, I'm one in power, because together they're the one God. Because I'm going to read it. Whether you believe it or not, I just want to read it. Are you ready? You can read it, but... But what? Because this is the point. You're saying Trinity, right? I'm going to prove the Trinity if not from the Bible. I don't, so make up your mind. What do you want to talk about? No, I want to talk about Tawheed. Okay, so you want to go back to Tawheed? Okay, let's go to Tawheed. That's up to you. No, I'm no this, is, this is part of Tawheed. Okay, so then let me read the verse. Go ahead. John 10, 27 and 30. I'm going to read it for you. Hold on, let me get it up for you. One second. I got to do the reading for you. Hold on one second. <clears throat> First of all, let me show you the Hebrew Bible, the, the Torah, the Zabur, what it says. One second, just again, because I'm going to read it for you to make it easier. All right. Now, one second. Deuteronomy 32. Let me just get all the verses lined up. All right. Oh, boy. Beautiful life. Okay. This is now first the Hebrew Bible, and I'm sure you're going to agree with this. This is the Torah. See now that I, even I am he, there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So here God says, all power over life and death is in my hand. Life and death is in my hand. You die when I want you to die, and you live if I want you to live, and no one can deliver out of my hand. You would accept this, right? Yeah, I do accept that. Okay, so no creature can talk like this. No creature can say no one can deliver out of my hand and I make alive, right? Correct. Okay, now, Isaiah 43, verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. There is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work when who shall let it. In other words, no power can deliver anything out of my hand. When I want to do something, who can stop me? You agree that only God can say that, right? Only God can say that. Allah. Okay, good. Well, hold on. I'm just trying to set it up so you can see. Okay, now here, Psalm 95. This is a Zabur of Dawood. Zabur of David, or Zabur, but anyway, 95, 6 to 8, it says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, Yehovah, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. So he's saying, we are the sheep in his hand, hand meaning his power, his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of mass in the wilderness. So here it's saying, since you are the sheep in God's hand and his care, 
where he protects you and feeds you and preserves you by his hand, his power. Listen to his voice. Okay, keep that in mind. We are the sheep of God in God's hand under his care and protection. We are to hear his voice. Now watch this. Watch what God says. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, life that never ends. Notice what God is saying. They shall never perish, nor shall anyone snatch them from my hand. See, I give them eternal life. No one can snatch them out of my hand. When they're in my hand, I protect them, and I'm almighty to preserve them from anyone who want to destroy them. They're my sheep. They're my voices. So you see what God said? Do you agree with what God said here? I do agree. And nobody can do what God can do. So, okay, but again, I just want to make sure. So you do, you don't have no problem with God saying this, even though it's in my Bible, that just God said, let me read it again. God just said, one more time, let me read it. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, they follow me. We follow God. I give them eternal life. Only God can give life that never ends, right? Correct. And they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. They're in my hand, and I protect them. I'm almighty, so no one can destroy them if they're in my hand. So you agree with the words of God here, that God alone can say this and do this, right? Of course, and I and I and Amen. I agree. A, a lot of what the Old Testament says, yes, agrees with the Quran. Good, good. So you agree that this God, but, here God is agreeing with the Quran, right? Yeah, that's Jesus. And not not just this. Jihad, you know, many... listen. That's Jesus speaking. I just quoted okay. Jesus, and you just admit okay, Jesus so, claimed to be God. So okay, but listen okay. before you get excited. Hold on, wait. Hello, okay, no, no. Jihad, listen, that's Jesus. I just quoted Jesus in John 10, 27, 28, and you just admit that's God Almighty speaking. So you just admit that Jesus claimed to be God Almighty in the flesh. Thank you, Jihad. No, you you, you were in the Old Testament. No, I, was, I know. Just... I didn't say where I was. I said, are these the words of God? You said yes. Well, well what I'm saying to you is God can say that. But Jesus God just can... said it. Okay. Now let I, me read okay. the rest of it, though. My I believe father, that Jesus can say that. But you just said only God can say, I give eternal life, none can deliver on my hand. So you're changing your mind now? Now let me finish it, though. Let me just finish it, 29 and 30. You were, my, you can I finish the, the two verses, Jihad? Let me just finish the two verses. My father, see, Jesus speaking, so he's not the father, who's given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them from my father's hand. So notice what Jesus said. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Why? My father and I are one. There you go, Jihad. Okay. Now, do you accept I that? Believe Jesus, Jesus has the right to say those things. You made it sound as if God was saying those things in the Old Testament. And if God is saying those things in the Old Testament, that's correct. Okay. I want everyone to hear this. So you're saying a creature can give everlasting, never-ending life. A creature is almighty over life and death, and a creature has the power to protect believers in his hand forever so that no one can destroy them. A creature can do that, huh? No, a creature cannot do that. But that's what Jesus just said, and you don't believe he's God, so make up your mind. No, no, Sam, what are you talking about? Jesus said... I give them everlasting life. No one can pluck them out of my hand. No one can deliver them out of my hand. I'm almighty over them to protect them. So, Jesus, you don't believe he's God. So are you saying he just committed shirk? No. What I believe is that this is a version of the corrupted oh. Bible. So you want to change That's subjects right. and talk about the Bible corrupt and the Quran corrupt, or you want to stick to Tawheed and Trinity? We're sticking to Tawheed. I'm just okay. making a comment that okay. I don't believe that this is the authentic. So do you at Jesus. least agree Jesus claimed to be God, even though you don't believe he actually said it? As far as my Bible is concerned. As far as the Bible that you have today, yes. I believe it's written that Jesus claimed to be God. Okay, then that's it. Let's go to Tawheed then, because there's no point. You're admitting my Bible in my Bible, Jesus claims to be God Almighty. I know that's what you guys believe. No, I'm saying my Bible. Does it teach that Jesus claimed to be God, one with the Father and the Spirit, even though you don't believe Jesus said it? That's all. Because if so, then let's go to Tawheed because there's no point. You, you, you admit my Bible does have Jesus claim to be God Almighty, though you reject it. So let's talk about Tawheed. I reject it. Okay, so then 
There's no point in them arguing what the Bible says. You accept that the Bible says it, but you don't believe the Bible. So, so you we... were expecting to argue with me on that point about saying, where does Jesus uh, say that? No, you were. T did you hear yourself earlier? You said earlier, where do you find the Bible, the three are one? I said, we don't find it in that way, but you'll do find Jesus saying, I am the Father and one, and I can show you the Holy Spirit. Is yeah, God, I, but... I, was, I was asking you, but at the same time, Jesus prayed. Correct. Yes. Okay. If he's not the father, what do you expect them to go silent, not talk to the father? What do you expect to happen? And we already discussed this. Jesus is not the father. So Jesus can pray to the father, speak to the father. And the father can pray and speak to Jesus. What's the problem? I, as okay, a Trinitarian, so yeah, you, you have the problem. That, okay. So what, what, what you, so. So what you're saying is that's more than one God. You're saying no, that's, I'm there's saying God and God. There's more than one person God. who's God. Notice again, you committed shirk because you assume that God can only be one if he's only one person. Why? Why? I don't even. Why, why do you just assume that if God is more than one person, he can't be one God? Where are you getting this from? Because one plus one plus one doesn't equal one. Even though one times one times one equals one, one minus one minus one minus one equals one, one to the third power is still one. Are you going to now reduce God to math? My friend, I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to explain to you. You guys make it, you guys make it clear that there are three entities in the Trinity. Yes. Three. Sure. Exactly. So you can understand why it would be confusing and it's even very confusing for various sects of Christianity to explain. Do you expect others... that God can be fully understood? So there are things about Allah that doesn't confuse you. Are you sure about that? And the rabbis reject this idea. Which rabbis? There are rabbis that actually end up believing in Jesus and worship the Trinity. So what rabbis are you talking about? The same rabbis that say Jesus is a false messiah? Those rabbis? Well, for example, there's this one rabbi... Uh, you know, he, he he has good relations with the Muslim community. Yeah, Tovia Singer, right? Yeah, Tovia Singer. Oh, but that Tobia same Tovia. Singer, yes. Okay, but that and same Tovia debates Christians saying Jesus is a false messiah. God condemned him. He's burning in hell. And that same Tovia says Messiah will not be born of a virgin. That same Tovia says Messiah does not prophesy the coming of a messenger named Ahmed. All of which you believe. So if Tovi is right, that means Muhammad is a false prophet. I didn't say he was. I, I didn't say he was right regarding everything. I'm ah, just so he's only right when he agrees with you. I like that. Well, no. What what I'm saying to you is, he's a learned man of the the Torah. Really? So. So he's a learned man. So does he believe that the prophet like Moses is Muhammad? Because you just said he's learned in Deuteronomy 18. He you doesn't said, believe in Muhammad. But wait, he's a learned Christ man Christ. in the Torah. He's a learned man in the Torah. So if he's that learned, that means surely he could see Deuteronomy 18. The prophet like Moses is Muhammad, right? Because that's what you're saying. But he says, no, Muhammad is not the prophet like Moses. And it's not about Muhammad. So do you agree with this learned man that you Muslims are liars when you misquote Deuteronomy? Look, Muhammad was mentioned in the Old Testament. Okay. Does that learned man agree Hebrew. with you? What? Does that learned man, Tovi Singer, agree with you that Muhammad is mentioned in the Old Testament? Because you just said he's a learned man. So can you show me where he says Muhammad is mentioned in the Old Testament, this learned man that you appeal to? He never said that. I saw that in a different video. No, well, hold on. But uh, he's a learned man. He's an expert in the Torah. I want him. Show me this Tobia Singer that you you mentioned him. He, Show me. I, I never said Tobia Singer believes in Muhammad, but he agrees with us in the sense of Tawheed. Oh, so wait. He will accept him when he agrees with you, but when he then rejects what you believe and shows that your religion is false, then he's wrong? No, but no, 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 no. He doesn't, he doesn't say that our religion is false. He basically says, you know, you see, the thing about the Jews is, let me explain to you about the Jews. They're not just a religion. They're also a race of people. So sure. as you know, a person cannot just become a Jew. If you want to follow the law, if you want to follow the law as the Jews do, and you're not born a Jew, they call you a Ben Noah or a Ben yeah, Noah. Noahite laws, yes. Okay, so 
the thing about Judaism is is that you don't have to be a Jew to get to heaven. So in his book, basically, he keeps his tradition, he keeps his laws, okay. he believes in Moses, but he doesn't follow. No, I don't Muhammad care Salallahu what he thinks. What, I, what he thinks about Muslims, whether they go to heaven if they believe in Muhammad or not. What I'm asking you is, this learned Jew that you appeal to who studied the Torah, does he believe the Torah teaches that Messiah will be born of a virgin? You have a prophecy in the Old Testament that says there will arise a great prophet. Okay, then can you show me where he says that's Muhammad? Hey, he didn't let me finish. I okay. never said that that was Muhammad. Okay. I, I'm saying that's Jesus. Can you show me where Tobias Singer says it's Jesus? I never heard him say it. No, he doesn't. He thinks Jesus is a false messiah under God's wrath. What are you talking well, about? Well, then I, I, I disagree with him regarding that. Okay, so okay. can we put this learned ass aside? Because he's a brain ass, and the only thing he's learned is stupidity and lies. So put him aside. You appeal mm -hmm. to him. I'm just mentioning you keep appealing to people that I can use against you. So can we put them aside and go back to Tawheed in the Quran? Because you had a problem with Allah, uh, or, I'm sorry, Jesus praying. And by the way, it's not just Jesus glorifying the Father. If I show you God glorifying Jesus as God and the creator, will you accept that? So Jesus created the earth. Is that what you're telling me? God the Father praises and glorifies Jesus for creating the heavens and the earth and being the Lord who is the God that rules forever. There you go. There's a, there's a your tap dancing. No, this I'm telling you that's in my Bible. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. I can read it if you want. Or if you want to put that aside, we can talk about Tawheed because you, you still haven't gotten to Tawheed. Because no matter what this I show you... It's all a part of Tawheed because you're telling me that Jesus and God are, 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 are one God. Yes. I'm asking you. Yes. I'm asking you. Is Jesus the one that, that, that created Adam? Yes. Adam. According to our Bible, the Father with Jesus, his Son, and the Holy Spirit created everything. Yes. So why is it that in the Old Testament... There's no mentioning of a son. Who told you Jesus. there's no mentioning? I'm going to give you a mention. I can give it to you. Here, Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. Hold on, my friend. Let me show it to you. Proverbs You're 30. telling me the son is mentioned. Yes. The son. Yeah, I'm about to read it if you let me. Yes. It's mentioned in the Old Testament. Yes. Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. You want me to read it for you? You ready so I can read it? But don't, don't, don't. Don't play no games. I gave you the verses. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 3 and 4. What games? Let me read it. I'll give you the link to the Hebrew. Here. I neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the Kadoshim. Kadoshim is plural of Kadosh, holy ones. I don't have knowledge of the holy ones, meaning these holy ones are beyond my ability to understand. Now watch this. Who has ascended? Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Yes. Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Go ahead. Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Keep going. Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Boom! Surely you know. But you know what? There you this, go. This doesn't really uh, say to me that God is mentioning that he has a son. Hold on. Who is the one? That controls the winds and the waters and ascends and descends. Who is he? Who is that one? Who is it? Read it. Who ascends and descends throughout the heavens and the earth? Who controls the winds and the waters? Who has power over creation? You tell me that's not God? Well, we believe. Who we is believe it that in that verse? It says, what is his name? So who is it? God, right? And what is his son's name? So God and his son do that together. It's right there. This is not this is not the, in, in the original Hebrew. And I'm, okay, I'm going to give you the link to the original Hebrew. Can you read it? No, you know, because all the Bibles now come with the Old Testament. You need to go to a Jewish store okay. and buy the Hebrew Okay, Bible. I got the Hebrew online. You can read it here. Interlinear. The Hebrew is right there. You don't even need to read Hebrew. You can and see it's it. changed too. But oh, there we go again. So why do you keep asking me to show you verses when you can say it's changed? Do you want to go back to Tawheed in the Quran now or no? But isn't this a part of it? 
Oh, well, if I show you the Hebrew, you're going to say it's changed. Here it is. Here's the Hebrew. I'm going to give you the link. Wait. You're going to see the I Hebrew. believe the Old Testament is more accurate than the New okay, Testament. Okay, then here you go. It's Here's your accurate. Not completely accurate. Okay, well, here goes your accurate Old Testament. Hold but on. Yalla, kemmel, ya habibi. Go ahead. Yeah, that's easy. Hold on. I'm trying to get you. Where's the... Uh... Hold on, man. How do I find your... Here you go. Click on that. Click on it. And I'm going to give it to everyone else. Here you go, guys. Here's the link for all of you guys. Okay. Now, you don't need to read Hebrew. You can read the Hebrew in English letters. Like, it says, Me, ala Shamayim, Wa, Arid, right? Me, Asaf, Ruach, you get it. Now read the last part where it says his name, Ma Shemmo, Umma, Umma, and then what else? Shem Beno, his son, Ben, Beno, Ben, his son, his son. It's right there in the Hebrew. What? I don't, I cannot, I cannot believe that. That's why you got to change religion and come to Jesus and give up Islam because you're following the false religion. So do you want to go to heat in the Quran? Or well, I don't what? understand why why you're not willing to become a Muslim. Why would I? If I go to Muslim, because I go to hell. Because you don't have to give up the teachings of Jesus when you're yes, a Muslim. Yes, I do. Can I worship Jesus as my Lord and Savior, as the Son of God who became no, flesh? No, you don't worship oh, okay. him, but you can still follow him. No, I'm, I'm, as, uh, it's, okay, why don't I become a Mormon? Because they follow Jesus, so I should be a Mormon. They still believe in the Trinity. No, they don't. They have a very perverted concept of God. It's not Trinity. But why don't I follow the Mormons? They're after Muhammad, and they're spreading like wildfire. And at least they <clears throat> will use my Bible, even though they'll misinterpret like you do. But why don't I follow them? Or even better, forget about Mormons. I want to be a Baha'i. Can I follow Baha'u'llah and the ba ba Baha'ism? They acknowledge all the prophets. But Islam... Islam is proven to be true. Oh my goodness. How is it proven to be true when it contradicts the Bible and contradicts the prophets of the Bible and the It actually Jesus? completed the Bible. How is it con completing the Bible when everything I show you in the Bible contradicts the Quran? You say it's corrupted. So are you can Not you show so much completing as as correcting, I should say. The Quran nor says it corrects the Bible. You want to now open that topic? We can go into the what the Quran says about the Bible. See, now you're changing the topic. You caught it, right? I don't mind. You want to go there? Let's go there. Do you want to look at what the Quran actually says about the Bible? It doesn't say what you just claimed. All right, let's let's go with Tawheed and then we'll see. If we okay, what Tawheed? I keep saying let's go to Tawheed in the Quran. You keep changing the subject. Do you want to talk about your Tawheed in the Quran? Yes. Okay, then open up Surat al maryam chapter 19. Read for me 16 to 21. And I'm glad you, at least you can somewhat read the Arabic so you know that when it's... Yeah, I, 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 I can. Okay. okay, read it for me. Just read the English, chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. Bismillah rahman rahim Ayah 16, all the way 21, yeah. 16 to 21? Yes. Uh, and give an account of Mary in this book when she withdrew from her people to an eastern spacious place of the temple. Now keep in mind, you you know, um, you're not, you're not, we not only do we have to look at these verses, uh, Sam, mm -hmm. but after we read these verses, we must look at, at the tafsir. Okay, the I'm not gonna is going to cause otherwise. trouble for you uh, because, because I'm not going to allow you to interpret this any way you okay. want and put your own spin on it. You know, Jihad, once you go to the tafsir, you're going to be in trouble, right? I'm going to show you. We, we will go to the tafsir. Okay, good. We go to tafsir, but it's going to cause huge problems. More problems. Ibn Abbas. Okay, can you finish? <laughs> even finish the verses yet. And give an account of Mary in this book when she withdrew from her people to an eastern spacious place. Then she screened herself off from them. Then we sent to her our revelation. That's not what it says, right? It doesn't say we sent to her our revelation. That's not what it says. Can you tell me okay. what the Arabic says? 
من روح روحنا إلى روحنا. Yeah, so we sent to her our ruh, our spirit, right? Ruhana. Yep. So we sent to her our spirit, and that spirit appeared like what? In the form of a perfect, well-proportioned man. So so far, the spirit appeared as a perfect-looking man. Good. Keep going. That's what the. Let me see. Well, at least finish the ayat, and then we can go to Ibn Abbas. Mary said, I invoke the most gracious God to defend me from you. If you guard the least against evil. He said, I am but a messenger of your Lord. I give you glad tidings. That's not what it says either. It doesn't say I give you glad tidings. Le ahabba means I, I am a messenger of your Lord to give you. I come to give you. Yep. I come to give you, not glad tidings. So correct that mistranslation. So it says, I am only a messenger of the Lord to give you, I will <inaudible> give you. Give you what? Give you a son. So the Spirit's going to give Mary a son, right? What yeah, kind of no, son? no, no. I what give kind you, of son, yeah, though? The glad tidings is parentheses. I am but a messenger of your Lord. I give you a, a son. What kind of son? Yeah. didn't just say son. It said, what kind of son? A pure son. Okay, wait. So who's going to give her a son while she's a virgin? Who's going to cause her to conceive and give birth to a pure son? Allah. No, it says I will, the spirit. So you just said the spirit is Allah? So the spirit I'm is Allah? going to give her the son. The spirit said, I am sent to give you the son. Read it, man. So 19. Yeah. They, yeah. So the spirit is Allah? Because you said Allah gives her the son, but the spirit says, I've come to give you the son. So the spirit is Allah? Well, let's see what the tafsir says. Good, because the tafsir is now going to give you nightmares. So I'll let you read it. Go ahead. You want to go with tafsir, now it's going to give you nightmares. But... Go ahead. You want the tafsir, right? You don't want to stick with but, Quran. But, Good. But, 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 but this, what? This doesn't, this doesn't, this doesn't, uh, the what? Doesn't want. Go. This doesn't really. I, I look, 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 look. I, I've heard, I've seen this whole sp uh, spirit. Oh, oh. I even heard in there, Ruh al Quddus in the Quran. Yes, but there is. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? You're saying your Quran doesn't make sense? Are you attacking your own Quran? What are you talking about? I mean, this is uh, this is. Um, you just attacked your Quran, right? Least, you, you, because I'm not a scholar. Jihad, you just heard yourself, right? You just said your Quran doesn't make sense. You just attacked your Quran. You just said it. What? That this doesn't make so your Quran doesn't make sense. You are now you committed an act of kufr. You're a kafir now. In a no, 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 no. You just no. said it. I'm saying it doesn't make sense to me. But because I don't have knowledge. Okay. As much as the, okay, but now know. notice the trick. When I quote something in the Bible, and you say, "Well, that makes no sense," you reject it. But now when something doesn't make sense for you in the Quran, you still accept it even though it doesn't make sense to you. But when it comes to the Bible, if it doesn't make sense to you, you reject it. But when it comes to Quran making no sense, you still accept it. Well, I need to see what the official Islamic position okay. is on... Can you read on... one more verse and then you can go to your tafsir? I'll let you read your tafsir, but can you go to Surah Al-Tahrim 66 verse 12? 66 for so because I want you to see how the spirit got Mary pregnant. Read 66 12, Surah Al Tahrim 66. How, how the spirit got Mary pregnant with Jesus while she was a virgin. I know this. I know okay, this. well, then read it. So to tell me. What does it say? And Maryam bit the Imran, Ahsanat Farjaha, right? Ahsanat Farjaha. What does that mean? Translate that. And Mary, the daughter of Imran, Ahsanat Farjaha. What does that mean? Guarded her chastity. No, you know what the word Faraj means, right? It guard, mean. guard, guarded her. Uh, 
guarded herself in her. Come on, be more honest. Genesis. Farja means what? Farja means what? She guarded what? Don't be ashamed. She of your guarded cross. her virginity. Just leave it no, there. No, it's not virgin. Okay, or right, you want to leave there? Leave it. All right. Okay. Okay. There, Let's right? leave it there. I know you. You under, You know what it means. Okay. And then it says, "We breathe. We blew into fi he into him. Him who meaning the farj, right? Yeah. Of our spirit. So why did Allah blow His spirit into Mary's farj, her private part, to do what? To give her the child. So you're admitting Allah blew the spirit into her private part to conceive by the spirit the child. So you just admit the spirit created Jesus in Mary's womb. So the spirit is the creator. Hang on a minute here. Well, I'm hanging on, man. I'm hanging on. Okay, so there you go. So if you want to read to Ibn Abbas, go ahead, because now it's going to cause more problems for you. So you want to read Ibn Abbas? You want me to read it or you got it? Ibn Abbas, tafsir of... Uh, which you have it or you want me to get it for you? Yeah, you want to send me... Uh, yeah, let Ibn me get Abbas. you the link so you can read. Hold on. Let's see. This is the one you wanted. Okay. So you which one? You want this for 6612 or you want it for 19? So did the money for, ni for 19. Okay, okay. I've, I've... All right, here you go. All right, let's see. Well, let me just get you the page itself because it's gonna, it doesn't all show up. Hold on one second. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't think. Uh... Okay, here you go. This is Ibn Abbas. I'll let you read it, and then you got to read 19. We're gonna give you the link for uh, 19 as well. Here you go. This is a click on it, the Ben Abbas, and read it for everyone. Guys, for the rest of you, here's the link. All right. All right. Now, you want to read it or let me read it? Yes, we don't say that the spirit is a separate entity. Okay, that's fine. But do you want me to read it or you want to read it? You guys say he's a separate entity. Okay, I know that. You want to read it or do you want me to read Ibn Abbas? Uh, it says Anne had chosen so that she purifies herself after the end of her menses. Then we sent our unto her our spirit. And but it, that's in parentheses, so that she purifies herself after the end. Our messenger Gabriel, when she had finished purifying herself, okay, people can't hear you. So the parentheses because they're quoting the verse. So it's saying, the ayah says, then we sent unto her our spirit. And then the commentary of Ibn Abbas says, our messenger Gabriel. So he's saying this is Gabriel. The spirit is Gabriel. So when she had finished purifying herself. And so Gabriel appeared as a man. Okay, let's go with that. But now watch this one. This is Ibn Abbas. I'm I need the full tafsir. So yeah, but uh, you got to keep going. That's why I'm going to give you now the verse 19 of Ibn Abbas. Here it is. Here it goes. And we're going to look at what he says in 6612. Here it is. This is now what he says about verse 19. This is him. I just gave you the link. As you look at it, I'm going to read it for the benefit of people. He said, that's in parentheses, Gabriel said to her, I'm only a messenger of thy Lord that I may bestow on thee, that Allah may bestow on you a faultless son, last your son. What? Let me open it and see. Okay, now, I just read what it says. Now, I want to show you what they say about 6612, this Ibn Abbas. Yeah, these two tafsir don't, don't support you. No, well, it's going to backfire against you, but you're not paying attention. Because let's go with it now. I'm glad you went to the tafsir. Now you can't run from this tafsir. Here's Ibn Abbas, tafsir 6612. It's now going to backfire yeah, the against two, you. They, 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 didn't, uh, they didn't avail. My friend, it's actually going to prove my case if you're patient. Because let's agree. I want everyone to agree. We went with Ibn well, Abbas. Listen, yeah, okay, okay. Let, let's go with uh, Ibn Abbas. Let me pay attention, though. I just gave you the link in Surah Tatarim 6612. Ibn Abbas said, the spirit is Gabriel. Gabriel appeared as a man and saying that, I have come to give you a faultless son. Allah will give you a faultless son. Now let's read Ibn Abbas on 6612. Surah Tatarim 6612. 
Are you ready? Because you wanted Ibn Abbas, but you're gonna now you're stuck with it. Are you ready? You know, I'm, I'm... can I read sixty six twelve though before you argue with me? What Ibn Abbas said about sixty six twelve? Can I read it? I gave you the link. Can I read it? Can I begin? Tell me yes, so I can begin reading. And Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chaste, therefore we breathe therein something of our spirit. For that's in parentheses. Though. Now that's the verse. Parentheses means that he's quoting the ayah, and now he's going to give you the meaning. So what's the and meaning? So, and so Gabriel breathed inside her garment. And she became pregnant with Jesus. So you just made Gabriel your God, Allah. Did you catch it? Let me read it before you argue. And Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chaste, therefore we, this is Allah speaking, we breathe therein something of our spirit. So Allah says no, we Gabriel, breathe. Allah just gives Gabriel. Okay, let me finish. Gabriel. Don't cut me off because you're twisting. The Arabic, an says, angel. The Arabic says we breathe therein. That's Surah Al-Tahrim. But then Ibn Abbas said, Gabriel did the breathing. But the ayah said, Allah breathed. Because so, he breathed the spirit to Gabriel and Gabriel passed it. To, to no, it didn't say Gabriel passed it. It said Gabriel breathed. So Ibn that's Abbas, what it is. Okay, so you're saying that Gabriel is with Allah and Gabriel and Allah breathe the spirit. So Gabriel is Allah's Gabriel, partner. Good job. Gabriel is Allah's angel. And his, and his partner, right? His because sister. when Allah breathes, Gabriel breathes. Don't tap dance. It's not, it's, it's not about that. It's about Gabriel. Gabriel takes orders. I don't care if he takes orders. He's the one who breathed the spirit, but the ayah said, we breathe, Allah breathes. So if Gabriel's breathing, then Gabriel he's part of Allah. He has no power to do anything on his own. So Allah made Gabriel his partner and gave him power. So Allah committed shirk. Good job. Keep going. Keep going. See, that's you. That's you. You're, that's you playing games now. What don't playing do games? The, I, I don't want you to listen. Don't say things outside of the scripture and put your own twist. I went with the scripture. You went to the they commentary. The scripture, yeah, yeah, does. Okay? Jihad, you went to the commentary. I stuck with the scripture. Okay, okay. we're on the tafsir right okay. now. Let's try to let's try to break. Okay, this before you break it down. Okay, okay, before you break it down, can you go back to the ayah? Show me when the Quran says Gabriel did the breathing. Doesn't the eyes say we breathe? Allah did the breathing. Oh, I can't do this anymore. This is so. And so Gabriel breathed inside her garment, and she became pregnant with Jesus. So who got her pregnant? Okay, let's not go there. I'm not but going. How, who got her pregnant? Gabriel, right? Because he breathed the spirit into her, and she became pregnant. I'm not saying he had sex with her. It's a virgin birth. Who got her pregnant? God made her pregnant with his with with his qadr, his power. So then how come it says Gabriel breathed the spirit? That's when she got pregnant. Because if Gabriel breathed it, then it's it's the same. Because Gabriel oh, it's the works same. for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so wait. When Gabriel breathes, it's the same as Allah breathing. And you still don't say you just made Gabriel Allah's partner? Not a partner. It's not a partner. You just said Gabriel breathe, and yet it's actually Allah breathing. Not but a partner, it's a servant. But still, who gave him the power to breathe life into Mary? You said Allah, right? Allah so Allah allowed power. Gabriel to share in his ability to breathe life. He passed the spirit to him. Oh, so hold on. So he goes to Gabriel, and Gabriel then swallows and it goes right into Mary. Is that what you're saying? Allahu alam. That's all you can say is Allah knows best. Allahu alam. And no, here okay, again. Well, he's coming back. Okay, right? but here, here's the thing, Jihad. Notice what you did again. When something doesn't make sense to you in the Bible, you reject it, saying it doesn't make sense. Now, when the Quran makes absolutely no sense and contradicts itself and turns Gabriel into Allah's partner, it doesn't make sense, but Allahu alam, I still believe it. So you blindly follow the Quran, but won't follow Jesus in the Bible. Because we, I mean, no, no, nobody asks these questions. Because you've been blinded all your life to follow blindly. You are, you are a blind follower. You do taklid. You follow Doesn't blindly. Doesn't the field discuss these things? 
Say it again. None of the shiuch discuss these things. Yeah, because they're not stupid to discuss it because they know you're going to lose your faith. So they want to keep you blind. And Jesus came to give you eyes to see by his servants in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so Gabriel breathed inside her garment and she became pregnant with Jesus and she put faith. So in Gabriel the created the Jesus. Wow. So Gabriel is co-creator with Allah. Wow. That's not what it. I'm not going to allow you to say that. Well, okay. I'm just going by the commentary. Did he just breathe because he had nothing better to do? Or he breathed so he can cause her to get pregnant with a Why child? Why are you fixated on Gabriel? Because you went to the commentary. And the commentary said Gabriel breathed, but the ayah said Allah breathed. You so were, breathed? We, we, we were looking at this to discuss the Holy Spirit. Were we not? Yeah, but then, so do you want to reject the commentary so you can go back to the Quran now? Because I didn't want the commentary. You wanted it. Okay, but... I thought we were we the idea of this point was the Holy Spirit and you turned it into Gabriel. No, your commentary turned it into Gabriel. Did I say it's Gabriel or did your commentary say it's Gabriel? I don't believe it's Gabriel. Your commentary is wrong. You told me Ibn Abbas. Did I bring up Ibn? I don't want Ibn. He's wrong. When you're making the spin as if Gabriel is a partner with Allah when he's not. We, we I explained that okay. he's the so servant. So did Allah give Gabriel the ability? To breathe life like Allah breathes life. Yes or no? But the Quran doesn't say Gabriel. Exactly. So can we now toss out the commentary? You went to Ibn Abbas. I don't want Ibn Abbas. I want Quran. So you reject well, the commentary let's now? Check what, well, let's, say, let's check what Ibn Kathir says. He says Gabriel. Him too. He says Gabriel, Jibril. He says the same thing. So does Qurtubi. So does Tabari. So do you want to reject the commentaries? Let's stick with the Quran. If the Quran says that Allah has a spirit, then I, I, I can't reject it. Okay, but can you show me in the Quran where the spirit is Gabriel? I haven't seen anything like that. Exactly, because the spirit is not Gabriel in the Quran. The spirit is not an angel. Suppose, okay, okay you know what, Sam? Suppose, so suppose in a hypothetical situation, you you poked a hole in the Quran. Let's say you did. Okay. Let's say you did. How does that make your Bible right? Uh, you're the one who said, let's talk about Tawheed in the Quran. So you're back to the Bible again? <laughs> okay, hold on now. Now it says, we breathe our spirit, right? So Allah yeah, breathed out the spirit. Our spirit. Right? Okay, now, uh, okay, but pay attention to my point. Okay, but pay attention to what I'm asking you. It says, Allah breathed out the spirit. That means the spirit came out of Allah because he breathed them out of himself, right? Right? He breathed out the spirit, right? We breathed it out. So that means the spirit came out of Allah because he breathed him out of himself. Because when I breathe, the breath is coming out of me, right? Right? That's what the Quran is saying. Okay, so good. You're saying that Allah breathed the spirit out of himself. Well, if the spirit came out of Allah, that means it's a part of Allah. How can it be created? How can something that's part of Allah be created? That means you just admit the spirit is uncreated because it comes out of Allah. And there's nothing in Allah that's created. No, Allah's not created. Yeah, and then the spirit came out of Allah because he breathed them out. Like when I breathe, that breath came out of me. It's a part of me. It's inside me. So if Allah breathed out the spirit, that means the spirit was in him and came out of him. And if it's in him, it can't be created because there's nothing in Allah created, right? Allah is uncreated and the spirit is a part of Allah, so it's also uncreated. Takbir al-Masihu Akbar. We just got you to admit the spirit is uncreated. And yet the spirit is separate from Allah because Allah sends him and the spirit is his messenger. That's two. You're one step closer. Keep going. Keep going. I'm just going by the Quran. Good. So that means your tawheed that you were taught by your uh, shuyukh, mashayikh, they deceived you because that's not Quranic Tawheed. 
That's not Quran because the Quran says Allah and his spirit, they are uncreated. The spirit is uncreated and the spirit is part of Allah, even though he's sent by Allah and he speaks to Allah. And he's Where does it to say Allah. that? 1919, he says, I'm only a messenger of your Lord. Didn't he say that? I am Rasul. I am a Rasul from your Lord. 1919. Gabriel said that. No, it says the spirit. Ruh. Are we back to that? Nineteen seventeen, nineteen, and we sent her our spirit who appeared. No, I, uh, 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 nineteen nineteen. Yes, and then seventeen. Okay, well, I who's wanna, that? I want to. We got to look at the tafsir on that. We just did. Ibn Abbas said it was Gabriel, and then you rejected him. So make up your mind, dude. Are we back to the? No, nineteen nineteen. You were talking about sixty six twelve. Yeah, but that Ibn Abbas is talking about that. This is Gabriel that came in nineteen nineteen. The same Gabriel who in 66 blew into Mary because he was sent to get he her said, pregnant. He said, I am but a messenger of your Lord. Yes, Rasul. That is, that is Gabriel. And verse 17, does it say Gabriel or the Spirit? What does it say? Does it say angel or spirit? Does it say Gabriel she or spirit? She screened herself from, the, from them. Then we sent to her. Center what? Ruhana, our spirit. And he presented himself to her in the perfect form. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hmm? Ruhana. Yeah, Ruh, spirit. It doesn't say Gabriel. It doesn't say angel. So the, the spirit is a messenger. And he's breathed out of Allah because where does the spirit come out of? No, he breathed out a spirit. He breathed yep. out a messenger. Well, he breathed out the spirit and sent him to be his messenger. Exactly. Exactly. And whatever comes out of Allah can't be created. So you just admit this messenger can't be created. Bingo. Yo, 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 yo. What? This messenger was created by Allah. Where does it say this messenger was created when this spirit comes out of Allah because he breathes them well, out? That's how you have to understand it because this messenger oh. is, is. Can you is show me where Allah. Allah speaks of a creature as something he breathed out? Show me where it says, and man, we breathe them out. And the world, we breathed it out. And the heavens, we breathed it out. Allah never speaks about creation being breathed out of himself. Show me where Allah refers to a creation as something he breathed out of himself. Well, didn't you just say he uh, he breathed out uh, the earth? No. I said, show me something where Allah says we breathe out the earth. He doesn't talk like this about creation. Allah does not breathe out creation. He creates creation. So now you need to show me where Allah speaks of a creature or something he breathed out. He doesn't speak that way. He doesn't speak of creation being breathed out of himself. That's my point. Well, so you're now, uh, you've got two that are eternal. Good job. Now, my question to you is, can Allah, your God, Allah, well, appear as a man? this kind of stuff? Huh? Where are you getting, where are you getting, are you, who are you learning from? I studied Sydney. from, Tw over 20 years, dude. What are you talking about? Studying, meditating on the Quran, hearing what your scholars said and how they lied, and Jesus Christ Almighty, the Son of God who's real, by his Holy Spirit, showing me where they lied, why are they liars, and what the truth is. Because the Lord Jesus is alive, and his Holy Spirit is Almighty, and he's in us who love Jesus, but he's not in you, but he can be in you if you turn to the true Jesus. As Muhammad and Jesus were, 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 were brothers. Don't ever blast him. It's like saying... It's like saying Jesus and Satan were brothers. Don't ever insult Jesus like that.
They were brothers in faith. No, they weren't. Jesus and said he's the son of God. And they came to what Jesus taught. And How? Jesus was Jesus, a Muslim. If, what, can you show me where your Quran says Jesus is a Muslim? What does it say Jesus is a Muslim? It says Jesus is I am a Muslim. Well, he came to tell the people to worship Allah. All right. And there's no God. Okay, but you said he's a Muslim. I want to know where in the Quran does Jesus, where, be, anyway. I don't believe Jesus speaks in the Quran. You do. So where does your Isa in the Quran say, I am Muslim? Now, not only that, is it true? Okay, here's my question for you, though. Since First you're of all, we need to define Islam, which is submission. Yeah. Submission Isn't to it? who? To Allah, Jalla Jalla. No, according to Jesus, true submission is submitting to Jesus as God's son and listening to him. So do you submit to Jesus as the Son of God, as your Lord and Savior? That's true Islam. Do you? Muhammad was a messenger. But Jesus says, I am the Son of God, and you must submit to me and listen to me in order for me well, to then... first, we must prove, you must prove that the Bible is correct. Because so we do you know... want to now talk about what your Quran that you believe in says about my Bible, or you want to stick on Tawheed? Let me just read to you what Jesus says. One second. Well, what else do you want to say about Tawheed? Uh, well, there, I got a lot to say about Tawheed to show your Quran doesn't teach Tawheed. But let's go. I'll, I'll, okay. Can, let me just uh, read this though. Let me just read this. Mark nine verse we seven. We can say you know the Bible. I discussed the the verse of the Bible where you guys like to cut open the pregnant women's stomachs. Yeah, that you're gonna well, you're gonna regret opening up that uh, can of worms. You're gonna be sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, but now. Let's go to Mark. Hold on. Baby killers. Yeah. You the sure about that? Killers. You positive about that? You positive. Let's. We said we're going to stick to one topic okay. at a time. Mark oh, 9, we 7. To that. Okay. If we don't come to that, we'll, we'll get to that Jihad, another can time. can I at least read the verses? You keep talking. Let me show you what my Bible says true Islam is. Mark 9, verse 7. Mark 9. Whether you accept it or not, I'm just telling you, as a Christian who follows my Bible, here's true submission. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is now the voice of the father. A voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. So the true God says to yeah, Jesus. Yeah, and it says Adam is the son of God. Okay, so but your prophet said Jesus no. Jesus has what's supposed. Okay, but your prophet Joseph said no one is a son of God. Uh, was the son of Hashem. Was the son, the son of this and that. But your prophet Hashem. said no one is a son of Allah. So you just proved your prophet is a liar. Because if Adam's Allah's son. And Jesus, Allah's son. That's that what the Bible says. Okay, so do you accept my Bible and your prophet is alive? Supposedly when he got... Uh, okay, do you baptized. accept my Bible that God has sons and that means Muhammad is a liar for saying Allah has no sons? Yes Don't or no? Don't you know that the Bible that was around and the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam's time was different? Okay, if you say that. Okay, but... Do you agree, because you said my Bible says Adam's God's son and Jesus' God's son. That means Muhammad is a liar because he said no one is God's son? Do you agree I'm now? I'm telling you that it was different. Okay, can you quote, point to a Bible manuscript written before Muhammad, during Muhammad's time, that doesn't say Adam is God's son and Jesus is God's son? Which manuscript of the Bible can you point to before The Western Muhammad? scholars even admit that it was changed. Okay. Can you and quote you a Western scholar? The Emperor Augustus, who was okay. the son of Can you quote God, a, a Western, Western scholar? Can you quote a Western oh, scholar? Pagans. Let's try this again. Can you quote a Western scholar that says that the original manuscripts did not say Adam is God's son and Jesus is God's son? Quote me that Western scholar and point to me to the manuscript that he uses for proof. You have to look into that. I have it's, looked uh, into it. You don't know what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. Okay, now have, coming back. We have this guy, Bart Ehrman. Yeah, Bart Ehrman. The same Bart Ehrman that I use in my articles to refute Muhammad. Now, since you mentioned Bart Ehrman, do you agree with Bart Ehrman that Jesus was killed on the cross? Pay attention before you cut me off. Jesus was killed on the cross... And that his own followers, the Hawadi Yun, Peter and Mary, to name a few, had a vision that they believed was from God that convinced them that Jesus was raised physically, bodily from the dead, 
and was taken to heaven and now rules in heaven with the Father as God over the earth. Do you agree with Barterman? That's what the followers of Jesus saw and believed and taught? That's what they believed. Is that what you're telling me? That's what Barterman says they believed. Barterman, you just quoted against me. So let me ask you a question. I watched this documentary. But you didn't which answer the question. That, you know that, right? Which says that Jesus was a man and he, he stood before the rabbis and he was rebellious and he he was... He was against the 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 political class and, okay. and the rabbis and the Romans, and All he right. was trying to 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 fight the Romans. Really? So, are you saying the historical Jesus tried to defeat the Romans, which means the Quran is wrong? Because the Quran says Jesus didn't come to fight anybody. So, are you saying history proves your Quran is a lie? Interesting. And Where in the Quran it says it doesn't come to fight anybody? Because because it says that Jesus was sent to Bani Israel to exhort them to worship Allah alone and confirm the Torah between his hands and enjoin them on the gospel and announce them a messenger that would come after him named Ahmed. And then when the Jews tried to kill him, Allah took him to himself. So you're saying history proves that Allah okay, the Quran that lied. Doesn't, that, doesn't say, that doesn't necessarily mean that he wasn't. Which part of he was sent to Bani Israel to preach to them worship Allah and prepare them for the coming of Ahmed wasn't clear from your Quran, which you believe. Say that again. Your Quran does not say he came to fight Romans. It says he came to tell the Israelites, I'm here to give you the gospel, follow it, and get ready for a messenger come after me named Ahmed. When they didn't like him, they tried well, to kill him. I'm not saying the Quran says that. I'm saying that's what some of the historical evidence... So are they wrong or are yeah. they right? Are those historians wrong or right? Are they, they right or wrong? Right. They could be right, but that doesn't... Wait, if but they're right, that means Muhammad but, but, is wrong. If but they're right, Muhammad is wrong. But you, but what you're, but what you're not understanding is the Quran doesn't say that he did not come to fight the Romans. You want to bet? Because if Jesus came to fight the Romans, you're saying Allah was that weak that he didn't give him the power to defeat the Romans like he gave your Muhammad the power to defeat the unbelievers? So the Romans were much stronger and better than Allah and Jesus? So when... Allah wanted Muhammad to win. He helped him. But when Allah wants Jesus to defeat the Romans, somehow Allah couldn't get the job done. He had to now take Jesus to heaven. Oops. Sorry, Jesus. We'll try it again next time. Because he's going to send him back. Oh, That's so he failed the first time. So he has to do it a second time. Okay, good job. Allah has a, has a plan for Jesus to come back to fight the Jews. Okay, but I thought he's fighting the Romans. Why is he now coming back fighting the Jews? He changed his mind? No. That's going to be for the last day. So then Allah, why didn't Allah help Jesus defeat the Romans the first time? If the second he time he's just going to fight the he Jews. He picked them up. He picked them up. Okay, but you didn't answer the question. If when he's coming back, it's to fight the Jews, not the Romans, and he's going to defeat the Jews when he comes back, then if he was sent to fight the Romans the first time, how come he didn't defeat them? Was Allah weak against the Romans? They were too strong? Look, Jesus was against the Romans. You know that. Okay, if I know that, that means the Quran is wrong again, right? The Quran never says he's not against the Romans. Okay, let's try this again. If the Quran says Jesus came to fight the Romans, are you saying that Allah failed Jesus and gave him the victory against the Romans? If that's what Allah sent him to do, then he would win, right? Just like you believe Allah sent Muhammad and he defeated the pagans, right? That's not that then apparently that's not a part of Allah's plan. So then these historians are wrong. Good job. So now can we go back to Tawheed? You just changed the subject. Can we go back to Tawheed now? What, what, what do you mean the historians are wrong? We know he was against the Romans. No, he wasn't. He never came and fought the Romans because he came to preach. I didn't say king. that he fought the Romans. I said that he was against No, them. he wasn't. He said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's because on the day of judgment, God will deal with all these governments. I'm here to teach you to now embrace God's rule in your life by making me your king and savior because I've come to die for you in order... To save you from the wrath to come. So no, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. So you know, what if I bring you a sheikh to discuss with you? 
Bring me the sheikh and his sheikh and his sheikh. And what's it make? Bring a milk sheikh with it. Bring me a milk sheikh and then bring a sheikh and his sheikh and his sheikh. But you got to bring the milk sheikh with it so I can drink some milk sheikh. I can bring you a sheikh and, and he, he'll be able to explain. Okay, if he's uh, as long as if he can be like you. So you, you're respectful. You don't attack. You answer questions. You don't. Talk over me. I will be more than happy. And the shiuch are respectful. No, I've met a lot of shiuch. They're jerks. I, I've met them. So please, let's not go there. But forget it. That's another topic. Now, real quickly, though, I want to ask you a question. You agree, because you mentioned Jesus and being taken and returning. So you agree Jesus is physically alive, right? He's with Allah. Okay, good. Where is Allah? He's in heaven. Okay, so is he on the throne? Oh, sorry. Someone's ringing my bell. I apologize. Why would somebody ring my bell? Yes, who is it? He's above the throne. Oh, come on in. I'm not like many of you. Hold on. Sorry, hold on. Okay. Uh, I'm like, sorry, guys. My brother's I'm like, man, come in. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so according to your Quran, according to your Quran, Jesus is with Allah. Allah is where? Jesus is in heaven and Allah is above the above the arsh. So good. Thank you for proving Jesus is above the arsh. Good job. No, Jesus is in, is, is in heaven. No, Allah is that's not what the Quran earth. says. Show me where the Quran says he's in heaven. In chapter 3, verse 55, and chapter 4, verse 158, it says, Allah took Jesus to himself. I will cause you to send to me. He didn't say to heaven. So wherever Allah is, Jesus is there. So why is he with your God above the arsh? The Arsh. It doesn't, it doesn't say that he's above the Arsh. Okay, it says he's with Allah. I'm coming to take you to me. Allah took him to him. To Allah. 355 of the Quran and 4158 of the Quran. So you just said Allah is above the arsh. So if Allah took but Jesus... But you can't say things that are not specifically stated. It is specifically stated. I will take you to myself. So if I say, hey, Jihad, I'm going to take you to be with me. And I'm in my house on my couch. That means you're in my house next to me. Not necessarily. Okay, so if I say, hey, Jihad, come, come to me where I'm at. That means, no, don't come to me. Just come next door to my neighbor's house. And I'll call you on the phone. That's what it means. Okay. <laughs> okay, dude. Three fifty-five. Yeah, Sam, Sam, come on. You can't be serious with this. Uh, Three fifty-five, four one fifty-eight. It's the language of the Quran, man. It's the Quran. You cannot be serious with this. So you're saying I'm, I shouldn't take the Quran seriously? We don't say Jesus. I don't care what you say. I'm telling you what the ayat say. They say. Allah took Jesus to himself. Oh, Isa, I will gather you and take you to myself. But it doesn't mean that he's above the earth. So then where is Allah? If I, take, if I take you to myself and I'm living in a mansion, that means you're in the basement? Something along those lines. Oh, okay, so good. So I want everyone to hear it. I say, hey, Jihad. I'm going to take you to be with me. I'm living in a mansion, but I really meant you're going to be in the basement. Okay, yeah. Guy, come on, dude. The heaven is under. Under where? And where's Jesus? Is where's Jesus? Allah, Jesus is under God. Can you show me where it says under? It says, I took, took him to be with me, with myself. So is Allah under God? You really need to talk to a shaykh. Okay, well, okay. you're the one who called me, man. You wanted to talk. Now, here's my question, though. So Jesus is physically alive for 2,000 years? I wanted to know about that verse. Wh uh, which verse? I've been waiting for you to mention the verse. But before you mention the verse, here's what I want to ask you. So Jesus has been alive physically, bodily for 2,000 years, right? He's not dead. So he's physically, bodily alive. He's alive. And yet you do believe Muhammad is dead and buried in Medina, right? Until the day of resurrection. So Jesus has been alive with your God, Allah, for 2,000 years, physically, bodily. But Muhammad 
is dead and has been buried for 1400 years in Medina. And you still want us to think that Muhammad is comparable to Jesus. Muhammad was a messenger. Yeah, so that means you just admit by saying that Jesus is more than a messenger because he died and Jesus is alive. So you just made him more than a messenger. Jesus is the Messiah. And so what does that mean for him to be the Messiah? A messenger. But if a that's... Prophet. Okay, wait. So Messiah means prophet. messenger. So is Muhammad the Messiah? They're both messengers. Now wait, I want wait, you hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'll, I'll let you change subject. But you said Messiah means messenger. Well, if Muhammad is a messenger, that means he's the Messiah. So does the Quran call Muhammad the Messiah? We don't use that language for that. So obviously, Jesus is Messiah, which means something more than messenger. Because in 4171, it says Jesus, the son of Mary, who is the apostle of Allah, the Messiah, Jesus, apostle of Allah, so to be a Messiah is more than just being an apostle, right? Look, I, I, I'm asking you to believe Jesus is a man. And who denies he's a man? And I'm asking you to believe that he's God who became man. Right? Now, you, what's the verse you wanted to talk about? You said you had a verse you want to talk about. Yeah, the baby killing verse. Oh, about so you want to go there? Okay, uh, can you quote, go to Hosea and show me where it says there, show me where it says there that God is the one who forced people to kill babies, which is how you pervert the text, because I'm going to turn it against you. Read it for us. You can always come with some kind of a spin. to defend. Are you fire. sure? Are you sure I'm going to spin it? You're positive. You don't even know what my answer is. Okay, so read Hosea 13 that you would ju or the passage you were quoting so people can see what you just did with the Bible because I'm going to turn it the against The people you. of Samaria must bear their guilt mm -hmm. because they have rebelled against their God. Yep. They will fall by the sword. Their little ones will be dashed. Exactly. To the ground. Their pregnant women ripped open. Okay. So why is that okay? And who said it's okay? Listen to what you said. And you're, again, I'm going to now show you Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, what your Allah did, because you want to play this game. Why are you blaming God for saying that because my people are committing immorality and idolatry and refuse to worship me, that now I'll remove my hand of protection? And allow these nations to come in and do what they want to do. Because it's a fact of history that civilizations, kingdoms like the Babylonians, Assyrians, and others would attack places, villages, and cities, ravish women, rip their bellies open, and murder young men. This was a fact of life then as it is now. Just like when Boko Haram beheads men, rapes women, like ICE did with the Yazidi women. Are you going to say because God commanded them to do that? Or is that God removing his hand of protection and allowing wicked people to do what they do? Because unless God protects you, there's nothing so to stop So you're saying them. to me that there's wickedness in your Bible. Okay. So you're saying to me that when your prophet raped married women and murdered their husbands. Ah, see how you're not no, answering I'm answer answering you. Jihad, if you don't listen, I'm going to hang up on you because you didn't hear what I said. The Bible reports actual, accurate history. If I turn on the news and the newsman says a woman got raped, according to your stupidity, that means the news reporter condones it because he mentioned what is a fact of life. So let me ask you the question. Are you telling me that this is a report? Yes, because God is saying, now that you've rejected me, I'm the one protecting you from these nations attacking you and killing you. So because you don't want me, I'm going to remove my hand, and there's nothing to stop them from doing what they do. Raping, pillaging, killing babies, murdering men, which is what your prophet did. So, you, so you're telling me that... God is not commanding this. No, he isn't. Show me where it's a command. What's going to happen to them. Show me where it says, I command them to do this. He says, no, this is what's going to happen because you rejected me. But unlike your Quran, where your God does command such things. So you just buried your God.
Yeah, he doesn't come in. You want to bet? Doesn't he doesn't. In. You want to bet? He doesn't come in. Yes, he does. To, to he do com this. Yes, he does. The Quran says and the Hadith say, the Hadith say that Allah wrote the amount of adultery you must commit and you cannot escape it because Allah commands written that you will commit adultery. You want me to show you that? Excuse me? Your Hadith, Bukhari and Muslim say that Allah has predestined, written, all the um, adultery you must commit and you cannot escape it because you must do it because Allah decreed you must do it. Let me get you the hadith. Hold on. You got to be... What are you kidding? Let, okay. Okay, let's see if I'm kidding. All right, here you go. One second. Let me give you the hadith. You're going to read it. Here you go. I'm going to give you the hadith. I'm going to let you read it with your own eyes. Okay, hold on. Let me get it for you. Let me just go to the hadith. Here you go. Sal Bukhari, volume 8, number 609. Here you go. I'm going to give you the oh, link. No, man. No, read I it. Don't, don't go. No, no, no. Don't, don't run yet. Don't say anymore. Don't run yet. Read this at least before you go. Here you go. Please click on it and read for us. And here it is for everyone else. Please open it up and read. I read it even at best. I did not see anything so resembling minor sins as what oh, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Abu Huraira said from the Prophet who said Allah has written for the son of slowly, Adam. Slowly, slowly reading. Is, slowly. Allah has written for... Nobody. Watch out. Read it. Watch read out. it. His inevitable... Adam committed the sin in the garden. Finish it. And then he he knows finish we, it. We I'm gonna embarrass you. This earth. I'm going to embarrass you because you got scared. You didn't finish it. Read. We are punished on this earth. Read the we hadith. Sin. You and you coward. Beg Allah for okay, you stupid coward. Now I'm gonna disrespect you because you're a coward. Read. Are you cursing me? Yes, because you are not a man. You're not reading it. Read jihad. Read. But I am trying to explain to you. Don't explain. Read. read or I'm going to read we it and I'm going to hang up on you. On okay, earth. shut up. Yeah, get out of here. Habibi. Get out of here, buddy. So, of course, there's going to be sin. Okay, read what it says. It didn't say that, you liar. Read it or I'm going to hang up on you. You got five seconds. Read it. Allah has written for the son of Adam his inevitable share of adultery, whether he is aware of it or not. Keep reading. The adultery of the eye is looking at something which is sinful to look at and the adultery of the tongue is to utter what is unharmful unlawful to utter and the and the inner self wishes and longs for adultery and the private parts turn that into reality okay. or refrain from submitting to the temptation now read this from Sahih Muslim. Same thing. Here it is. Okay, but that just basically means that we're. No, it doesn't mean that. Read earth. it. Read the hadith before you give me your explanation. Read now, Sahih Muslim. I just gave it to you, and here it is for everyone else. Sahih Muslim. Read it for us, because I don't want you to give me. I don't want to hear comment. I just want you to read it first. What are you? What are you? What are you, what are you cursing me for? I didn't. I said you're being a stupid liar if you don't read. Now you read it, so now you're a man of integrity. Finish it. So you're doing it again. You're delaying reading it. Read it. Sahih Muslim number 6421. And what's the name of the book? Kitab al -Kadr, uh, Kadr. Kitab al Kadr. The book of destiny. Read it. I just gave you the okay, link. Right. The book of destiny, predestination. Can you read it or you want me to read it? But you have to understand the context. Okay, can you read it? But you haven't even read it to know the context. Read it. Abu Huraira reported Allah's apostle, may peace be upon him, as saying, Verily, Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. And which he of necessity must commit. There you go, buddy. Your God has fixed the adultery you must commit, and you must necessarily commit it, and you can't escape it. That's your God. Well, what you got to understand yeah, here gotta understand is that it's, it's referring to the adultery of the eye. Finish it. It's not just the eye. Allah the, predestined that you're going to commit adultery with your eye. We're going to look at women. Okay. okay. Allah predestined that you're going to commit adultery with your tongue. 
and Which Allah predestined. Don't talk over me, you coward, because now you're scared. Because it says Allah also predestined the adultery you do with your parts. You see it right there? Adultery is a sin. And Allah has commanded you to commit that sin because he's wicked. But, and, but, but what you can control... You can't control anything if Allah has decreed that you will commit adultery. Don't tell me you can control what Allah has predestined you for. So what was that about my Bible? Your God is in the business of making you adultery. has a choice whether he's going to cheat on his wife or not. No, not according to this. It said Allah has fixed and you no, must necessarily commit it. It doesn't say that. Okay, let me read it again. Hold on, so that everyone can see again. So you're ashamed of Allah. Abu Huraira reported Allah's apostle as saying, Verily, Allah has fixed. You're not interpreting it correctly. Okay. Jihad. Jihad, do you think you need to take a break now? I think you're tired, my friend. You can come back some other day. What do you think? We've covered enough today. I agree, but but I but I, I want I want to finish this very point and then I want to then I want to close it up. Why do you, why do you think that uh, that uh, Allah is is essentially forcing people to to commit adultery? Because let me read the text again. Here, let me tell you why I think Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. That's why. The adultery of the eye is the lustful look, and the adultery of the tongue is the Licentious speech. speech. The heart desires and yearns, which the parts may or may not put into effect. So exactly, Allah has even fixed whether you're going which to use your parts. Allah has this. fixed even whether you're going to use your parts to act on the adultery or not. Exactly. Okay, oh, so, so okay, so yes. oh, okay, okay. So yes. jihad, jihad. So if Allah has fixed, are you going to use your private part to commit adultery? That means he made you commit adultery. You're okay with that? Well, isn't it Jesus the one who says who looks at a woman is adultery? That's why Jesus condemned your God as Satan. Exactly. Jesus says if you lust for a woman, you commit adultery. That means all of the Quran is not the God revealed in Jesus. All of the okay, Quran is so Satan. listen to this. Listen to this. When, when you say that Allah will force us to commit adultery okay. with our sight, that is not only your sight, and it doesn't just say sight. It yeah, says, but it just says may or may not with the private part. Okay, so if Allah has determined that you will use your private part to then commit adultery, can you escape it? This is your final point. That's I'm going to hang part up on of you. The free will that people there is have. no free will. Stop lying. That doesn't exist in Islam. There is no free will in Islam. Call well, me next time. We'll talk about predestination. You're not accepting my answer. I'm telling because you, you don't know Islam. Bring your shield. Because I have written on the topic, Quran and Hadith teach predestination. Do you want me now to turn that? We can talk about predestination and it's going to be embarrassing. Why don't you take a break? Call me during the week. We can talk about... You know about what? Yeah. You know what? What? I, I, want to, I want to have the next discussion about predestination. Okay. Lord willing, this week. Call me. We'll talk about predestination. I'm going to, have, I'm going to be prepared for that Okay, one. good. We'll talk this week. All right, buddy. Oh, Peace. We'll talk soon. Take care. All right. There you go, guys. All right. Guys, we, we had a good crowd. We have about 560 people. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I, we 88 minutes, so we're going to shut down. Thank you for making the channel successful. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the videos. Thank you for supporting the ministry. Thank you for praying for me and my daughters. Keep praying for me and my daughters. Ask the Lord Jesus to give me the grace to get healthier to keep the weight off so my health won't hinder me. Ask the Lord Jesus to make me holier, to truly love Jesus, worship Jesus, obey Jesus, study his word and live it out, not be a hypocrite, but a doer of the word of the Lord Jesus, even when no one's watching. Ask the Lord Jesus to protect my daughters and fight for them and keep them healthy and save them, grant them salvation to be in love with Jesus Christ. And if the Lord tarries, I see them grow up to be godly women and I see them sooner than later. Beg the Lord Jesus for that grace. And ask the Lord to keep empowering me with the Holy Spirit to go deeper in the Bible and these sources to bring out the meat of Scripture so we can know Scripture, love Scripture, live it out, and destroy these filthy, wicked, satanic religions for the glory of Jesus Christ. And please make this YouTube channel successful. We had a good crowd. We had about 560. May the numbers increase for the glory of Jesus. People want to know the truth and love Jesus Christ. 
and be used of Jesus to destroy Islam, the cults, atheism, because Jesus is alive. He's real. And the Bible is his word. Let us proclaim his glory and love Jesus Christ even unto death until the Lord calls us. And do pray for the financial support for the glory of Jesus Christ. Perry, if my daughter became a Muslim, I'd hunt you down. I would spit in your face. I would hire someone to break your teeth, smash your face in the concrete, and then throw you over a cliff and feed you to the dogs. That's what I would do. What a stupid question. In fact, you just proved to me Muhammad is intelligent because you're much stupider than Muhammad. This level of stupidity even makes Muhammad look intelligent. Love you, Perry. So hope you're okay, Perry. Pit, Perry. My spit is better than you, Perry. Pit. Anyway, Lord Jesus is alive. Lord Jesus, forgive us. Lord Jesus, transform us. Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit to love you and obey you. Never shame you, Lord Jesus. Never betray you, Lord Jesus. Never blaspheme or deny you, Lord Jesus. We we'll love you by our deeds and our words, even unto death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and save us for your glory in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, pray for the ministry. Pray for the support. Pray the support comes in. And ask the Lord to give me perfect self-control to die to my flesh, get healthier and holier. And I love you guys. Lord Jesus willing, see you tomorrow. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Maranatha. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.